Hey everybody, welcome to the Ron Line Report. Today's guest, he is bodybuilding royalty, the son of one of the greatest, if not the greatest, contest prep coaches of all time, Chad Nichols, and the great Ms. Olympia three-time champion, Kim Chazewski Nichols, but now forging his own path in our industry. Please welcome Dominic Nichols. How are you, Dominic? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. So you're, you're 18 years old, correct? 18, about to be 19 in June. Okay. So are you, are you uh, finishing up high school now or are you in college? Um, I graduated last year okay. so, from high school. Yeah. So uh, I have some standard questions, guys. So it sounds like I'm reading at some points. I'm reading. So how old were you, Dominic, when you realized, you know, who your parents were, what they, how significant they were in, in this industry, the bodybuilding and fitness industry? Um, so honestly, when I was younger, I never really thought much about it. Um, they were always just mom and dad to me growing up. Yeah. It wasn't until about like freshman year in high school that I really like realized how important they were in the bodybuilding world. Cause that's when like all my friends would come up to me and they're like, Oh my God, I didn't know your mom was Miss Olympia <laughs> or your dad was like an amazing bodybuilding coach and everything. And they all followed them on Instagram and everything. So that's kind of when I really realized how deep into bodybuilding they were and everything. Yeah. I I'm curious. The first time the, the, the bodybuilding world knew about you was your dad had this forum called muscle mayhem, this website. Um, back in the, it started one, probably the late nineties. I think it started right when the internet was getting going and uh, his avatar, his name was El Patron. That was his, his, he didn't go by Chad Nichols. He went by El Patron and the avatar was your baby picture. <laughs> Did you know that? No, I didn't. You never knew that? Wow. No. <laughs> yeah, Cause we thought it was hilarious. We thought it'd be a picture of him or Ronnie or something, but it was you. It was baby, baby Dominic. <laughs> yeah. It was hilarious, man. That's great. Uh, so yeah, you, you've grown up in this industry. Uh, you've grown up around some of the biggest, freakiest Bibles you've ever seen. Ronnie Coleman, Dallas McCarver, Big Rami. Um, do you still find guys like that size freakish? Or are you so used to it that it's, uh, it's kind of normal for you to see a human being that's 300 pounds at like, you know, 8% body fat? Um, honestly, I've been around it my whole life that it's like, it's almost not normal to see that, you know? Like, because <laughs> I've seen it so much that it's just almost become like the standard for me. And I feel like, honestly, it's like almost raised my expectations for myself mm -hmm. um, because I know like how big they are and what they had to do to get there. So that's like, obviously I'm a lot taller than most of them. So I know I'm going to have to go above and beyond that in order to get there. Yeah. Are you six, two, or are you even taller than that? Six, two, right. Like right under six, two, but pretty much six, two. So. Okay. So even your classic limit would be like 245, I think. Yeah. Classic. yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> well, that might be, that might be, who knows? We'll talk about that. Uh, so your mom, she won all three of her Ms. Olympia titles before you were born. Yeah. It was the last three years of the last millennium, 97, 98, 99. Uh, subsequently downsized significantly. Do you ever look at photos or videos of your mom from those days and think, wow, I can't believe my mom used to look like that. Yeah. So, I mean, so I never got to see her like that, but I've obviously seen plenty of the pictures and the videos of when she competed and everything, but it's almost hard to like wrap my head around her looking like that. Cause I've only seen her as like what she looks like now. And nowadays she's just like, she just looks like a fit mom. Yeah. And like, even, <laughs> even like, like compared to what she was back then, like women's bodybuilding is just like changed so drastically that like if you took her physique back then and put it on stage today, it'd be like a figure competitor or a women's <laughs> physique competitor. <laughs> well, she was, she had some awesome muscle detail. She definitely had this, this gnarly look that no one had really seen before. She changed, she changed women's bodybuilding in the same way that like, you know, uh, Ronnie Coleman, Dorian Yates in their eras changed men's bodybuilding. She set a new standard and, you know, every, every few years, the standard goes up, up, up. But yeah, I remember when she was winning, people were like, wow, what is that? Is that is something else? That level of muscularity. Yeah. Um, yeah. When did you start weight training and what was the purpose? Was it for bodybuilding, sports, general fitness? So honestly, I started weight training about eight years old. Um, I used to be a cross country runner, actually. So I was a really thin kid. I was like, 95 pounds long haired kid so I'd always get bullied in school so and eventually I got tired of it and I told my dad I was like I want to get bigger and put on some size so he started taking me to the gym with him and everything 
um about 10 years old i really like started to like get a little bit more serious into it and everything because i started to see results and stuff hmm. um Dang. i got it <laughs> i got it uh when i was a freshman in high school i was about 140 ish pounds um the football coach came up to me and he's like you're a decent sized kid which like to me i was like i don't feel that big but to him he thought i was a decent sized kid and he asked me if I wanted to play football. So that gave me even more motivation to like get my weight up and stuff. And then I met some of my good friends, my buddy Adrian and my buddy Nathan, and they really got me like hooked into heavy weight training and everything. So from there, it just kept going on and on. Yeah. So had you played football before that, or this was a situation where the coach said you look like you could be a good football player? Yeah, I'd never played football before that. So my first year of football was my sophomore year okay yeah, did, yeah. Did, were you were you good at it did you enjoy it I mean I wasn't like a standout at it but like I mean for my first year I liked it I was I had a good time it was mainly just a hobby so yeah okay yeah um so what point did you decide uh this is something I'm, I want I, when did you get the bug as we say like you you knew you were never going to stop and you started setting really long-term goals um shoot it's probably probably around my senior year, honestly. Um, by my senior year, I was about 250. I had packed on a decent amount of weight for football, but it wasn't like a bodybuilding 250, you know, because I was on the defensive line, so you got to have a little bit of cushioning. Sure. Um, so after football ended, I cut down from 250 to about 215, 220, leaned out, and then from there, I got a really regimented diet and everything going and slowly put – weight back on and from there I got myself back up to 250 and was way leaner had abs and everything and it's just like once you see that you just kind of like you can't stop looking at it and you just kind of want to keep going and going and going you know so we have to know did your dad put that diet together for you did, did you yeah I would hope so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah he put it together for me he's training Mr. Olympias he can give us his own kid a diet um yeah um, did you ever, did you resist at any point pursuing bodybuilding because you thought maybe that's what people are going to just expect me to do anyway because of who my parents are? Um, no, honestly, it wasn't because I thought that people were expecting me to do it. It was honestly because once again, I was a really like small kid and I was like, I always struggled with eating when I was younger. So I was like, there's no way I'll ever be able to like eat the amount of food and stuff that I'll need to in order to like get as big as these guys and everything. But as I aged and got older, um, I was able to like almost like adapt to the amounts of food that I had to eat and just got used to it more and more. So I guess over time, I just decided I wanted to be a bodybuilder, I guess, you know? That, that's funny because uh, do you watch Ronnie Coleman's podcast on on his channel? Nothing, yeah. but, a, nothing but a podcast? Yeah. He, he had your dad on as a guest, an interview guest, him and Giles Thomas. Oh, Giles, shout out Giles, recovering from a heart attack over in the UK. Um, he was talking about, Ronnie, when your dad gave him his first, they first started working together and he couldn't believe all the food your dad wanted to eat. He said, I'd never eaten that much in his life. It was really hard for him to get all the food down. And I've heard that same thing from so many people your dad has worked with and coached over years. Well, there's not that many of them in, general, in total, but so that's that, that has to be something most kids overlook. They see the weights and they want to take all the supplements, but who's really willing to eat all that food every day? Was it, was that a struggle for you? Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's the hardest part. You know, anyone can go into the gym and train and lift weights and everything, but you got to be willing to make sacrifices. You got to be willing to eat every two and a half hours. You got to get the right amount of sleep, stay regimented with your supplements and everything. And at first, like when he was telling me, he's like, you're going to have to eat like 12 ounces of chicken and 400 grams of rice. And he's been always like, yeah, all right. There's no way. But then over time, I got more and more used to it. And so that just became the norm for me. So you were in high school at this point. How were you eating during your classes or between? You don't have time to eat between classes. How did you manage? So during football, I was just kind of eating whatever I could. I was eating like Pop-Tarts and just school lunch and everything. Yeah. Um, but it was like after when he set up my diet and everything, after football was over, that's when he had me eating that much stuff. So. There would be no way that I could eat in between classes and everything. Most of our teachers wouldn't even let us eat in class, actually. Yeah, I mean, certainly <laughs> I don't think, I, I really wouldn't imagine too many teachers would allow that. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, I, I have heard some stories of teen, like guys who won teen nationals or something saying, I had a really nice teacher who let me eat in his class. Like, I don't know if that would even fly today. There's so many, uh, so many rules and regulations. Uh, yeah, were your parents behind this 100% and equally? Like, who was more behind it out of the two of them? Because I, I can tell they're both supportive. Um, honestly, they weren't for or against it. They mm -hmm. told me at the beginning, they're like, you can do whatever you want. And we'll support whichever way you go. Yeah. Um, I feel like when I was younger, they almost tried to like keep me away from it for mm -hmm. some reason. But I feel like that almost played into like me going more towards it, you know? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, it's a tough sport. It's, yeah. yeah. For the amount of effort the body pro bodybuilders put out and the reward they get compared to other sports, as I know you're well aware, it's, yeah. it's you know, bodybuilders work as hard as NFL players. Yeah. You know, not all bodybuilders do, but the, the best ones do. Yeah. Um, yeah. For sure. Um, so, uh, are you a fan of the sport? What are your favorite divisions? Who are your favorite athletes right now? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the sport. I mean, growing up around it my whole life, I feel like it's in my blood with my mom competing and my dad being one of the best coaches in the world. Yeah. Um, favorite division is obviously going to be open bodybuilding because that's the division I'm going to compete in. But I like all of the divisions equally because each division has their own genetic freaks in it. Yeah. Um, as far as my favorite athletes, it's almost split down the center. I've got like my past favorite athletes okay. and like the current era ones. So like the past ones, like, Ronnie Coleman, Victor Martinez, Chris Cormier, Dennis James, um, Flex Wheeler. Current ones, we got like genetic freaks like Big Rami and William Bowenack. And then got the younger group, like the people that I feel like I gel with more because like we're around the same age group and we see eye to eye on things like Nick Walker, Hunter Labrada, Martin Fitzwater, and even like Urs. Yeah. So I like these guys a lot and I've had the pleasure to meet them a few times. So, and talk to them and they're really nice guys. Yeah. All those names you just mentioned at the end, the younger guys, and I've said this to all of them, to Hunter, to, to Regan, to Nick Walker. I think they're bringing back the youth into bodybuilding because bodybuilding, yeah. it always used to be the main supporters of the sport, main participants. It was like 18 to 30 year olds, but really a lot of 18 to 25 year olds. That was probably the biggest demographic. And it got older and older for a little while. And now I see it. I see the tide turning. I see it's, a, you know, I, I can understand why you would relate more to a 20, 23, 24 year old Urs or, a, a, you know, 20, what's Nick, what's Nick Walker, 26 right now? Something yeah, like I think 25 or 26. Yeah. Cause a lot of the open guys are 40 or over these days. So yeah. Yeah. To you, that's, that's middle age. Well, that is middle age. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a middle age, man. Who are you kidding? Um, I've seen, I've been following you. A lot of people have seen you because you you know, your dad's a proud dad. He hypes you up and stuff. I've seen some crazy lifting stuff over the years. And now I'm thinking if you're only 18 now, I must've been seeing you do some of the stuff when you were like 13 or 14 on, on YouTube, on Instagram and stuff. So I, I know you're, you probably at your strongest now because you're lar larger and older. What are some of the best lifts for the, uh, the weight geeks out there who like really get into that stuff? So honestly, this question, it's kind of funny. So I feel like a lot of people on this one, like get me and my brother confused for, for some <laughs> reason, they think that half the time there's only one son and they like mix us together. Um, so as far as me, like, I don't really like keep track of like my, like, I don't try to max out and everything and like keep track of that stuff. But I mean, like I've, I've benched 395 when I was in high school, um, hold 600 on deadlift and I've doubled 500 on squat. But like, as far as my brother and everything, like he's just got some absolutely insane lifts, like unhuman lifts. Yeah. Um, I mean, kid's 15 and he benched 455. <laughs> the hell, I, I, that, it would be because you guys, he, he has long hair too, doesn't he? He's, he's starting to grow it out. He's got like kind of like a like mohawk type of thing going on. Okay, good. Because otherwise people get confused because <laughs> yeah, I, I remember meeting you at the, the first Olympia Rami one, 2020 in Orlando. So yeah. you, would have, you would have been, been, I think, 16 at that point? Yeah. You were, you were already a big kid. I mean, you, you probably reached that height by like 14 or 15, I'm guessing. Yeah. And, uh, so... Here's what, here's what a lot of people like to know. Say like when you started high school, what'd you weigh? I think you said you were like 140 when you started high yeah, school? Yeah, freshman year, I was about 140. Okay. And what are we talking about right now? 
Right now, I'm about 270. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Good Lord. Wow. <laughs> it's deceptive, man. You have a big frame. Yeah. You know, that's the crazy thing is, you know, I don't know if anyone speculated what they think you can weigh, what you should weigh or anything. Have you ever, have you had those little arguments in your head, those little discussions? I mean, me and my dad have talked about it. Um, ultimate goal is to walk me on stage at some point at 300. Wow. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it. Yeah. Because <laughs> Rami's, how, how, I've heard so many different heights. I've stood next to him and I can't even tell. He's about 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 yeah, 5'10 or 5'11". Yeah, and he's he's been 300 on stage, I think, roughly. Yeah, this, this past one, he was like 278 or something Yeah, on yeah, stage. You, you've grown up with Rami. <laughs> yeah. Or seeing him at the shows and stuff, anyway, now I think about it. Uh, but like gym lifts, I, I got to get back to that because people, uh, you know, what style, what style of training would you describe yours as? And who, who influenced you? Did you develop your own style? So I kind of just developed my own style. I mean, I've watched plenty of like, like I watch Nick Walker stuff and Hunter stuff and I'll take like bits and pieces of their training stuff, throw it in my stuff. But um, like, I'm more of like, I do moderately heavy weight and more hypertrophy stuff. So like my sets are like sets of 10 to 12 reps, um, like lower, like, like finishing sets is like 15 to twenties. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's all mainly hypertrophy stuff. Okay. Yeah, because so you people do get you and your brother confused because he's all about strength, isn't he? Yeah, so he's like his rep range is like three to five <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on a good day. Yeah. yeah. So here's a good question. At your six two, I think you got your height for me, Dad. Although I don't, your mom, she's not short. Is she like five seven or five eight? Uh, I think she's at one point she was five nine, but she's definitely shrinking. <laughs> oh, that, that'll happen to you someday too. But oh, uh, I know. <laughs> okay, five nine. Oh wow. And how how tall is your dad? Six two, six three. Six, he's probably six two and a half. It's six, hard for me. To, I'm looking up at you guys. It's hard for me to tell. So, <laughs> it's a true story. But uh, you finding it? You finding it that the height thing? Some people see it as a huge plus. Some people see it as a big obstacle. You know, there's always that thing. It's it's gonna. It takes a tall frame a lot longer to fill out. But when it, when it's filled out, somebody who's six two with all that mass, it stands next to another person who's got an equal amount of mass, but they're five seven. You know, in bodybuilding, it's it's just overwhelming. The bigger guy usually beats the smaller guy. But uh, we're, you know, we're, do you have that struggle mentally as as it's seeing it as a huge bonus sometimes and as a challenge at other times? Yeah, I mean, being six two, it's got its ups and downs. You know, I mean, like once I once I fill the frame out, the illusion's going to look insane. But mm. like, obviously, there's the challenge of like it's going to take me twice as long to fill this out as a guy that's five seven. You know. Because yeah. it's like all my muscle bellies are like twice the size of theirs. So it'll take two times as long to fill that out. Yeah. Obviously, they won't have to weigh as much as me and they'll look just as big. Right. So it's yeah. got its ups and downs. Um, I think, though, that like it made me realize, though, that it, just how important it is in order like to be regimented and like precise about like when I have my meals, don't miss any meals, get to sleep on time, get a perfect amount of sleep and just basically just it's like clockwork you know you can't miss anything yeah are you aware of a guy named jamie the giant jamie christian from the uk <laughs> yeah I'm, i ran into him at the heart <laughs> okay yeah he's, i think he's six five yeah he's six five and he's filling out now he's, it's it's been a long road but he's it's yeah. great it's crazy how big how much space this human being is taking up right now if, you, <laughs> yeah. if you've seen him recently I, mean, I feel like i'm tall at six two and he's got a whole three inches on me six five i mean I, the, the tallest pro bodybuilder of all time do you know the answer um no i don't it's okay it was a long time ago <laughs> it was it was the 1980s his name is rolf moeller he's a good friend arnold schwarzenegger if you if you hung out in at the arnold and you've seen that that group that travels around around arnold is entourage Rolf, yeah. he's there a lot of the time. He was six foot seven and he was a pro bodybuilder. He did at least one Olympia that I know of. But did you see the movie Gladiator with Russell Crowe? I haven't watched it, no. <laughs> uh, see, if you're, if you're a little older, you've seen that 300 <laughs> times in the movie 300 Hunters. He's in that. He became an actor and he was, he's a badass in that movie. He's, a, he's like a German slave ga uh, gladiator and he's, he's still a big dude. He's very athletic. He's, he was like 300 pounds, but he was six seven. So. Wow. Uh, all right, let's talk talk genetics. You've seen so many physiques that you can probably rate where you get yours from what side. What do you think you got from mom? Because obviously, if you got 100% of mom's genetics, that's probably like, you know, hitting the lotto. 
But yeah. what, do you think, what do you think you did get from her? What do you think you got from your dad? Um, so honestly, I've obviously got my mom's legs. I mean, like there's times where we'll be in the gym and just like hanging out and like, we'll flex our legs and they look like identical. Um, awesome. my waist and midsection, definitely my mom's. Um, I'd say my arms are a mixture between my dad and mom. Um, I sadly got my dad's calves, which oh. is not a very good blessing, but <laughs> oh, well. Um, and then my shoulder width is my dad's for sure. So I'd say it's like an equal distribution between the two. Okay. So. Calves, the least un, the least important muscle group in bodybuilding. I can I can tell you because the people with the best calves of all time, they were never like the greatest bodybuilders. They never won tons of shows. And plenty of Mr. Olympias, I will not name names, but plenty of them could have had better calves, put it that way. Yeah. Okay. The calves were nothing special. They were just kind of adequate. Uh, so you're still starting out. You have so much time ahead of you. So are you setting short-term goals, long-term long -term goals? How do you structure that in your head? Um, honestly, honestly, I've just got two goals in mind. I mean, one, win the Olympia. That's that's everyone's goal, though. So, I mean, and I obviously want to win it more times than my mom did. But at the same time, I also I want to I want to break the record, you know, and I don't want to just break it. I want to destroy it. So the goal is 10, 10 in a row. Wow. Awesome. So, and I know that I know the only way to do that is going to be by winning my first one at a very young age so I can get in and get out. Because if I win my first one too old, I'll never make it. Yeah. Um, hmm. But uh, and then my other goal is obviously I'm six two, so I want to I want to build a physique unlike anyone's ever seen before. So I like I want almost like an aesthetic, classic physique look, but like with a mass monster weight. So like at three hundred pounds with classic lines, like in my midsection and everything. I love it. So. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So I'm curious here. Do you think you know Rami very well? You've she's probably practically part of your family, I guess, at this point. Yeah. So. yeah. How many Olympias do you think he's capable of winning? Honestly, I think he could go. I think he could go at least four more. Honestly, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I don't see anyone right now that's like, oh no, Rami's in trouble because of this guy. I don't see anyone yeah. who's really like a, a major threat. Where like, if I was Rami's friend or coach, I'd be really worried about right now. There's some great, right. great bodybuilders up there with him, but he's right now he's the man. Um, yeah. So. So let's finish this off by I know it's so common for guys to jump into shows way before they're ready. I've seen guys do it like they've been training a month and they say, I'm going to do a show. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Please, guys. It's, it's becoming more common because of Instagram, I think. Everyone wants to be like in prep mode and have like the, the audience every day. But yeah. you don't seem to be in any particular rush. So what, what's your process or how, how are you going to work this? So honestly, I mean, most kids my age, they, they start to get in shape, start to lean out and they get eager and they just like, oh, I want to jump on stage. And I mean, like, that's great and everything. Mm -hmm. But with me, like, I want to be able to like win. I don't want to just jump on stage to jump on stage and get like a second or a third place. I want to make sure that every single show I get on stage for, I, I'm on there to win. Mm -hmm. um, so honestly, and I'm not here to rush anything. I know that these, these next three years of my career are going to be the most important three years because that's when I'm going to put on the most mass and the most size and everything. And by the time I compete, I'd like to be able to like, like my first show, I'd like to be able to do some damage in like a pro show. Like I'd like to be that good in my first show. That's yeah. the goal. Right on. Yeah. I mean, Hunter Labrada, I'm sure he had a similar path where he really picked and chose, waited a long time to start competing relative to when he could have. And he picked his shows wisely. And I think he was undefeated up yeah. until, up until the, his first Olympia, right? Yeah. 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 That's the first time he had never won the show that he was in. So yeah, I, I like that. I like that strategy a lot. It makes so much more sense because, you know, I'm sure you, you see this all the time. There's so many kids your age that they, they, they can't just take the time and build their base and, make those gains that they need to make because this is a very unique time in your life that's you're never going to see this again this is a, like a once in a lifetime opportunity this this age range you're in right now and they have to stay lean all the time because of instagram or the beach yeah. or whatever the club i don't know and they and they have to compete and i see these kids competing like over and over again like, what are you doing yeah so you know, you've clearly got a good head on your shoulders you've got you got some good guidance at home i would think too uh you know does either does either mom or dad you know, do they talk shop with you about this stuff as far as your plans? Um, they just, 
they're both on my side. They are just like both like, like, honestly, they're just, they've always been there for me, you know? And like, no matter what, like whenever I feel like, like I'm not doing as good or something, they're still there for me and they always try to help me out the best they can. Um, but I know that either way, they're going to always be there for me and in my corner, they got my back the whole way. So, yeah. 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 I mean, they, they've always struck me as, I don't know your mom as well. I see your dad a lot more than I see your mom. Yeah. I can't, remember, I can't even remember the last time I saw your mom in real life. Many <laughs> years. I see your dad here and there. So, yeah. uh, you know, good dude. I love Chad. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> Honey Rambo, I used to call him the Chad. The chat. <laughs> the chat. I'm so chat. I thought it was funny. But anyway, well, Dominic, congratulations on everything so far. I know your journey is just beginning. So much, so much ahead of you. It's it's exciting. Oh man. And you know, you're you're in a good spot. You've got you got your head in the right place. And I can see everyone who follows him on Instagram at DC Nichols. You can see the work ethic on this young guy. Yeah, you 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 got that vision, man. I, I, I'm gonna <laughs> be you. watching. So yeah, best of luck with everything, Dominic. Appreciate you taking the time. And everybody, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, leave your comments, do all that good stuff. Thank you for watching Ron Line Report with this young man, Dominic Nichols, and we'll see you next time.